Oh yes, I've saved my, my lover who I don't really care about. Oh no, I have to regenerate now immediately. I have to go now. My planet needs <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Doctor Who Reviews. It's good to be back. It's also good to not have COVID-19. <laughs> yeah, that's a plus. And I'd just like to thank Kachiri straight away for um, holding the fort superbly during my absence. It's also good it's to be that. back in the sense, if you couldn't tell from the audio quality of the last one I didn't mention, I did all that in an anime then. True. And, and not... it sure would have been nice before going to an anime den to uh, to uh, take the proper story that we were doing off the shelf instead of we're going to play 5D chess and prank yeah, friends. It, it was meant to be an April Fool's prank that went horribly wrong. Oh, it went yeah, horribly wrong. you say? Because you Kachiri fucking watched the arc. Yes, and he got his revenge by getting to talk about Orphan 55 again, didn't he? So we're fine. All right, yeah, we're fine. And, and I mean, you're just coming off of COVID, so... And you picked a good story before we have to deal with them next week, so... Yes, we're so what let, I picked was not the Ark. It's not the Ark. It is Sharda. I'm going to let you off the And to discuss Sharda and not the Ark with me, I'm joined by my two co-hosts. Yeah, sadly, Kat's out again this week for personal reasons, and uh, we wish her well. That's luck. But, to my virtual left... He's been on the chaise long, on the chaise long, on the chaise long, all day long, on the chaise long. It's Freezing Inferno. I don't know what that means, but hello. Shout out to Wetleg, that's what it means. Right. And to my virtual right, what if I say he's not like the others? What if I say he's not just another? It's Kachiri. Thanks. <laughs> rest in peace, rest in peace, Taylor Hawkins. So, Shada, you picked one with a hell of an interesting backstory. Uh, so, this would have, I say would have for reasons, this would have been the final story of Season 17, Tom Baker's sixth season. Uh, Tom Baker, Lala Ward is the second Romana. Uh, script edited by Douglas Adams. In fact, the story was written by Douglas Adams as the six-part finale of that series. Unfortunately, in 1980, uh, they got about halfway into making it, and then there was a strike, and by the time the strike was resolved, uh, they couldn't get their studio space back. And so Doctor Who's 17th season had to be cut early, and Shada was just cancelled. Just, nope, we shot all that stuff, we're not finishing it. So it, for ages it was this lost story. And I mean, in 1983, when they couldn't get Tom Baker back for the Five Doctors, Terrence Dix was like, well, what can I do? You got any footage of Tom Baker? Oh, we got him punting in Cambridge. Oh, great! We'll have him punting in Cambridge, and then we'll get caught in the time warp for the, for the episode. That's it. So that was the serendipitous use of the shadow footage for Five Doctors. You know, over the years, there have been lots of uh, various attempts to uh, complete Shada. In 1992, when the classic series ended and they really didn't have anything else to release, they were like, hey, what if we put the uh, Shada clips on VHS? But they also had Tom Baker show up to give linking narration. So for all the scenes you could see, you, they'd just play out. And then you cut the Tom Baker in this museum. And he'd say, and then I went in the TARDIS and I did this. And they cut back to the, same, the other scene. Like that, you know. And there are other uh, versions that you probably shouldn't seek out because the people who made them are kind of adults. Like, I'm going to say their names. Ian Levine made a bootleg shot animation. Of course he did. Yeah. Why wouldn't he? Of course he, he did. And uh, there's also a, a BBC a Big Finish sort of flash animation thing where it's like the eighth Doctor and Romana going back to redo Shada because of the five Doctors. It's just basically an excuse to remake Shada but with the eighth Doctor. And probably well, is it an animation or is it just just pure audio? It's no, flash. They got, they, they got, yeah, they got this like Flash animation is pretty limited because it was 2003 and, you know, computers had the uh, internet capacity of a potato back then. But so hey, at least we like... finish on adults. Yeah, yeah. And uh, then there's also a novelization, which sounds really great. Unfortunately, it's written by Gareth Roberts. So, <laughs> no, no, no. And that brings us to 2017, where the people behind the... Uh, 
Second Doctor missing animations. The stuff like Power of the Daleks, uh, Macro Terror, and other fine things. Decided, okay, let's animate the missing parts of Shada and put it out. And so that's the release we're watching today, which omnibuses Shada, an originally six-part serial, into one two-hour, 15-minute-long movie. Yeah. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So let's talk about... Yeah, so we, we did come to a decision that because it was shot as a continuous movie, we're going to treat it as one. And I should note that uh, at, at recording, uh, they've released on Blu-ray Doctor Who Season 17. It's already, it's already been out in the UK for months, but it just released in Region 1, and I don't have my copy here yet. It's on its way, courtesy of Bezos Air, but... Apparently, it has Shada, and I think it cuts it into episodic form. But I can't confirm that yet, so, you know, just keep that in mind. But for now, we're going to treat this like an omnibus. Mind you, mind you, while we say that, this episode is, even though it's done in the movie, it's clear when the, the cliffhangers are. Yeah, it is. And it the, is every 20 minutes, it's like, oh... There's this obvious bit of rising tension and sudden peril that's su suddenly resolved. We can point them out when we think it is a cliffhanger, but it's as you say, it's fairly obvious. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, 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 I think I can know them. But... And the other thing is we're not going to keep mentioning when it cuts back from animation to live action, because you can see that on the on the pictures presented for the episode anyway, so... We'll just say that anything shot in Cambridge on location is uh, is live action. And anything in the professor's uh, dorm room study, whatever you want to call it, that's that's what's filmed. And certain things like the cell on the ship and the think tank space station, which we actually opened the story on. Yeah. That Those are the only bits that they actually filmed in 1980. Everything hey. else is going to be epic. So and none of it will... Oh, go ahead. Now, Chris's room, that's animation. Uh, the command ship and the other ship animation and the titular yeah and shadow animation yeah and shot and shut up yeah and none of it was filmed in front of a live studio audience so we we're missing on that too <laughs> <laughs> god Yu-Gi-Oh was filmed in front of a live studio audience <laughs> hey, but, hey kids are we gonna play in the synchro fest you oh, know we yeah. are you know i'm gonna hate it uh you don't like that, the yeah, i feel like Hey, they added, uh, they're actually adding other things that's not gyms or packs. They actually have a way you can earn a title if you max it out this time. Yeah, oh, and, and Synchro's fine. It's just that I keep running into the, into the biggest tryhards that beat me, so. Well, I mean, you do that when you're not, pl when you're playing any fucking deck, to be fair. Also, I've not been able to play either. very much because of, you know, being sick with COVID for a couple of weeks, but. Well, yeah. We'll, so we'll have to have we start oh, Shada then with a with a cute little bit where Toby Hadok, longtime uh, friend of, of Doctor Who, gets a little cameo as a continuity announcer. That's cute, yeah. And it's just like, you know, later than build or um, later than expected, it's Shada. It's like, yeah, we know what you're doing, Toby. <laughs> no shit, 37 years overdue, better late than never. And then we begin with Thunderbird 5, I mean Think Tank. I mean, look at it. It's Thunderbird 5. I guess. And we've got um, six people in white sitting down on seats. Five of them looking like extras from Reboot. And, and then one with the scar. Yeah. I wonder which one is going to be important out of those six. Hmm. I, I said in my notes, I wonder which one's going to be the bad guy. Oh, of course the man with the scars. That we, we're going to count down Roman numerals, uh, Roman numerals, which I appreciate very much. And then, of course, the scarred man wakes up when the kendo hits zero, and all the others do. They just sort of spasm. Also, there's a big orb in the center, and that floats up. Oh, no. Behold, the mysterious floating orb! And get you what to see that orb, because it features quite a bit in the story. We're, we're going we're gonna to say orb more than a GDQ audience. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Literally, any any fucking round thing they gotta they unison say the meme. Oh, 
<laughs> no, and then here's the thing. I know a lot of uh, staff members. They hate it. it. It's all because it was like a random Super Mario World run from like yeah. 2019 or yeah. something or 2018. Oh, it's good. It, it has. It goes back. Old. I was gonna yeah, say I'm more sure. robes than the Sonic Free special stage, but that's even better. So, I, I mean, I, I can I can understand if they'd be fucking sick of it by now. Anyway, the guy that totally isn't a villain uh, picks up the floating orb and leaves the room. And Idle the... sequence drop. Yeah, and the uh, the reboot extras are wandering around, but their movement's a bit odd, stilted, like their brains have been messed with. And then, then we get the the, uh, the title sequence as, as, as an escape pod is launched, presumably containing the guy with the white hat, uh, the, the, the guy with the scarred face. White hat's a bit later on. And then Cambridge University. Cambridge, Earth, 1980. And a nice fellow riding his bike. And if this was a Chibnall episode, that would be superimposed on the screen in giant letters. <laughs> <laughs> God. With Inception music to, to boot, like Cambridge. Rain, 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 Rainiac, Rainiac, can you can you can you do it? Can you do it? Can you Photoshop Cambridge and big? I can I, I can probably do that. Yes, I can probably do that. That's not too difficult. Oh. So um yeah, so the guy in a brown jacket, that's Chris Parsons. He was a charming little character, Professor Chronotis. Who? Hey, Rain, did you notice that we've seen this guy before? If I did, I didn't recognize him. This is an actor named Dennis Carey, and he was... The fake Borad from Time Lash! I'll be damned. <laughs> you know, the robot guy. Oh, not yes! The blue not the blue robot guy, but the fake no, robot the, the guy. No, the puppet. The, the metal puppet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's him. That's him. Yeah. That's so, interesting. You know. It's nice that he got to show up in Doctor Who. It's unfortunate that it was in fucking Time Lash, fudge. Yeah. But Big Professor Kronos is, is a charming character who has a TARDIS in his study. What? And he, he looks at it and just like, okay, and then walks off. <laughs> yeah, so is this the Doctor's TARDIS? Is it his own? Is is he the Doctor? No. All will be revealed very shortly. Um, it's the Doctor's TARDIS. Of course it is. Kronotis is very absent-minded. He has a habit of completing Chris, Chris's sentences for him, which is quite uh, cute. <laughs> and then there's the bit where it's like, oh, you want you want some tea? Yeah, sure. One lump or two? Two. Sugar? Yeah. <laughs> is he beating the teapot or something? <laughs> what? <laughs> no, no, it's just like those, uh, like, uh, tea cubes that just become water-soluble when you pour something on it. <laughs> tea cubes? <laughs> Do you just want two lumps of tea cubes, or...? I've got it! Why don't we put the coffee in a bag? Oh, God! <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's so, a reference to a UK advert that you will not get, but... Uh... Right. So, part, so uh, Chris is here to borrow some books on carbon dating from the professor, and so the professor's like, Oh, help yourself. Borrow all the books you like. Sure, whatever. You know, so he borrows his books, he has his tea, he, he heads off. And the professor sits down, and this is wild, considering what I just said about Time Lash. He pulls out a book, and this is the fucking Time Machine by H.G. Wells. Yeah. Did, did, did the motherfucker who read Time Lash, was he just a big Shada fan who was salty that it never got made? Well, it never Finished. got aired in that time, so he wouldn't have known, would he? I mean, if he was a BBC insider, I don't, I don't fucking know, but he's well, like, ooh. You, you also said it's the same actor. I wonder if the actor brought, like, you know, maybe the director like, so what scenes did you fill? I mean, I'm, I've been curious about this. Oh, I read a book by H.G. Well, oh my god, I got it! There you go! There you go! <laughs> so, and then we get our introduction to the Doctor Romana, which, if you've seen the five Doctors, it's that scene, except that a giant fucking space cone doesn't interrupt them. Yeah, and the funny thing is, in continuity, that space cone does still happen. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the, I the I think they get around it in the in the uh, in the novel that we're not going to mention because of the writer, but I think they mentioned that as well. I mean, I mentioned I mean I mentioned the novel and the writer's name. Fuck them. Okay. Yes. Yes. But they're they're, but they're putting I... on the river cam. Uh, the doctor drops his pole in the water, and that's where he gets taken by the the triangle. 
in Five Doctors. And he's all and uh, he's also uh, the uh, guy with the scar is up on the bridge, so he's on Earth now. We had to talk about this this man's fashion sense. Yeah. That hat is fantastic. Oh, I think oh. Elsa. I think Elsa Anifer, when she wrote that show, she described uh, Christ- She described it as Christopher Neem walking around Cambridge in an unfortunate piece of 1980. Yeah. <laughs> Which, yeah, I mean, look at it. That's like, do do. It's the 80s, motherfucker. Apart from the hat, he looks like he just stepped off the set of Flash Gordon. <laughs> well, and I, and I made a joke. I just wanted a Doctor Who episode where they know the villains of the city, they just need to find them. And as is saying, like, just have the Scar Man walk right back by and pass them in that outfit. I feel there's a great <laughs> evil coming. Do, 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 do. Anyway, Chris Parsons is on his bike and apparently he's taken the wrong turn to Toontown. <laughs> that's, the, that's the one joke I'll make about animation switching, because this is the first time. Okay, Judge Doom. So, well, there, there, there's also like I just got like uh, whenever that scene was happening. Uh, what's that song? Do 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 do. You know, um, take, take me away. like for some reason the second I saw that like that song popped in my head. I'm like, oh god. Well, what's uh, funny is that in the 1992 thing that I mentioned, where it's just the film scenes and Tom Baker, uh, they, they didn't actually finish the music because they didn't finish the story. So, like, what they did was they had uh, Keth McCulloch do it, who did the uh, music for Sylvester McCoy, which is 80s as all fuck, and it just feels fucking weird to hear that score for a Tom Baker story. But yeah. they tried to emulate the music of the time, which they, they even have a credit for the uh, composer, Dudley, Sim- Dudley Simpson, who uh, passed away. As yeah, they, they, they had, like, it. a special thanks or dedication or, you know. Yeah. Because he was the composer of uh, the Tom, ba- most of the like Tom Baker era, so you know that. <laughs> that and found that he'd lost Tom his job over lunch, which is which sucks. God Almighty! But yeah, so Chris Parsons heads to his uh, heads to a lab, and did you notice the cute little Easter egg here? There's a they pan over, and there's some books on the desk, and uh, they're Hitchhiker's Guide jokes. So one of them is written by Zepha Beeblebrox, and the other is something like. Hyperspace bypass planning law, so yeah, that's for real. That's a cute little. Uh, that's a cute little gag. Do you think they intentionally wrote the character of Chris Parsons to be like Four Prefect? I mean, Douglas Adams wrote it, so that's he what probably I mean. wrote him to be like fucking Douglas Adams. Yeah, I mean, uh, then of course, whenever uh, Shada didn't happen, I wonder if some of the ideas he had for some of his characters went into well, one of the five books. Fu- it's funny you say that, Kachiri, because have you ever read the first Dirk Gently's Holistic Detective Agency? I've seen the show, and the show is fantastic. Well, I don't know how they do the show, but the original book is is literally just he cherry picks stuff from Shada and uh, City of Death and sort of mashes them together. Because there, there's a Chronotus in Dirk Gently. Yes, there is. And I haven't, I haven't read Dirk Gently in a while, but I just, I know that little thing. Oh, I recommend right. the show. The show it, it is great. Is that the one with Elijah yeah. Wood? Yes, yes. Yeah, because th- there was a BBC pilot with Stephen Mangan, which was okay. Which never got picked up again. Basically, um, what they did was they took the books and instead of having it be like scene from scene from the book... You're watching as uh, Elijah Wood, who's in the middle of this, like, uh, the best way I could phrase it, shitstorm. <laughs> and just every every time Elijah Wood, Woods turns around the corner, Dirk Gently's there, and just something weird is going on. <laughs> and it's just, he does not know what's happening to him. It's hilarious. It's great. I don't remember the uh, Stephen Magnum pilot, but it sounds good. Anyway, here's some fun with a book. Let's let's um, subject this book to radiation. Oh no, it's broken by microwave. No, no, no. Even before oh. that, it's like the book is doing some weird fucking shit. It's like yeah. <laughs> it's it's written in windings. It's written yeah, in windings. Written... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and like, been... see, as he reads the book, you can see a clock on the wall just turning, passing hours, and he turns back. And the book tries to like dodge him when he's trying to poke it and shit. He tries and to like, stab it with book. like a, a 
scalpel or something, and the book just goes whoop, whoop. Fucking oh, yes. <laughs> well, dying, crackling I... like it's in Dark Souls with lag. <laughs> I, I said in my notes, I knew Wing Ding was evil text that somehow manipulated time. All I could think of during this scene was Ubos. <laughs> Ubos? Please tell uh, me someone book? remembers Ubos. No. I don't remember Ubos. I don't know. Ultimate Book of Spells. Guy. It was a. I think it might have been a Canadian cartoon. Mm. I have no idea what that is. Well, I'm only mentioning that because I don't want to mention the other magical academy property that people might refer to. Yeah, well, let's let's go with Ubos. Let's yeah, go Ubos. With Ubos. Okay. Ubos. But um, yeah. So, this this so, is quite quite funny. So as Rainy has said, um, threw the book into the microwave, an x-ray machine, to look at it for some reason. Um, I didn't realize it is a good idea to microwave this. Went back that far. One of the oldest YouTube shows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, the fucking x-ray machine blows up. And the book is, like, perfectly fine, but glowing and, and radiant and the red eyes. And the first thing he does, the first thing he does after... You know, microwaving this book with x rays is touch it. Yeah. And burns them. Yes. Wait. It's meant to be an x ray yes. machine, not College... a microwave, but it just looks like a microwave. <laughs> but it's still x rays. X rays radiate heat. Yeah. And, if... so, uh... yeah. and then the book regenerated. <laughs> the book starts glowing. Well, it didn't even get damaged, so it didn't, it didn't regenerate. It just absorbed the energy, I think. Book digivolved into radioactive book. Do, 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 do. Holy shit, my copy of the Hunger Games just turned into Catching Fire! <laughs> and now it's literally Catching Fire! Ow, my hands! Nice! So, back at the college, the Doctor and Romana head out, and they meet a funny little guy. Oh yeah, we meet the token sexist. The token What? The porter. Oh god. I mean, come on, he, he pretty much just misses Claire. <laughs> Oh well, we. Well, I we know, know it was the it was the style at the time, but still, it was the style at the time. <laughs> yeah, but they meet this guy, and they he and you know it's mentioned that the doctor has visited the professor before, and various times, and it's like, oh, but you didn't visit this time. Oh, but I did when I, when I had a different face. And as it turns out, they're here to visit him because the professor Cronotus is a time lord. Dun dun dun. Who, who retired from Gallifrey, and he's been here for a couple of hundred years. The Doctor and Ravana came here because they got a signal to come here for something very important, but Cronotus has a shit memory, so he doesn't really remember what it was. He can't remember whether he sent it, or or he can't remember sending it, or someone else sent it. I was and thinking maybe eventually... the guy with the scars on his face sent it, but no. They eventually figure out that he sent it because of a book, which, hmm, interesting. And while this is happening, uh, the Scarface man tries to see Cronotus, but he tries to get Wilkins' attention. He's just standing there. He's like, you, come here! Yeah. <laughs> I think he just says you at first. Yeah. But he doesn't get in. And, well, the reason that the Doctor and Co. were called here, they also mentioned that the Doctor and Man on the bridge heard whispering, babbling voices. Which, uh, that's, that's the portent of danger, but... The professor accidentally brought a book from Gallifrey here to Earth. Accidentally. And books, from, and books from Gallifrey are really dangerous. So, what 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 was the book? Oh, nothing but the worshipful and ancient law of Gallifrey. Uh-oh! Oh. You still want the sacred... What is it? Artifacts? The sacred artifact of Rassilon with incredibly dangerous powers. This isn't like no. the Book of Law or something over time. Something like yeah. that. It's. I know. wonder if I wonder if Chapter One is titled "The, the Kid We Found in the, Outside the Rift That Gave Us Our Don't Powers." Don't even. Don't even. <laughs> it, it's it's just like oh hey I brought this footstool back from Gallifrey for me, Professor. That's not a footstool. That's the mind. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, what do you think about this cabinet? That's not a cabinet. That's Rassilon's sarcophagus, you fool. There's still a body in it. Look. Oh, well, I'm, I'm, uh, well, damn. I, I just need to cover up in my little cozy blanket. That's <laughs> blank. <laughs> Sweet Jesus, Cronotus. Just everything is off Rassilon. <laughs> the night, the night clothes of Rassilon. So. 
God. So, Russell Lover is everything. He's not even in the story. We're kind of jumping. We're kind of jumping around with Shadi here, but you know it's fine. We kind of have so, to. Uh, Parsons calls a friend up about the book in the phone booth, and he's you know a regular phone booth, not a time traveling clue. And he's like, "Holy shit! This fucking book just blew up your X-ray machine. It's fucked up. You gotta come here and check it out." Also, we're not having pizza today because the microwave is destroyed. <laughs> yeah. We got the Scarface man. He's walking out into an open field. And he just sort of climbs the air and disappears. Yeah, this is the invisible spaceship part of the story. Which... Well, so... <laughs> isn't this whole idea was... Anyone can come up with an idea for a spaceship. I mean, making it invisible, it could be anything. Yeah. Except, well, we see it. But also, you know, the, the more reasonable thing is, dear fucking God, do you see what we had to spend to go to Paris? Make it a goddamn invisible spaceship! I guess I guess he lived to die another day. So... Uh, he, he also uh, shopped at the same dealership as Wonder Woman. Nice. <laughs> oh, God, you I, too, I love uh... that, that joke in the Lego, mo- the, the Lego Batman movie. <laughs> to the invisible chair, it just explodes. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> or uh or uh robot chicken uh, I'm in the bathroom right now oh and then you know one of them stands up walks like five feet in front of her and sits down grabs the cockpit controls <laughs> there's, there's also an interesting bit before he climbs into the invisible spaceship where um he gets a ride from a passing motorist Oh yeah, this bit. And then it cuts to another shot, and he's in the car. The motorist is nowhere to be seen. And the car stops in the middle of the road, and then the next cut is him driving. Yeah. And the implication is he's killed the guy with the sphere, and well... taken his clothes, <laughs> and learned how to drive because of the sphere. Yeah, because yeah. the guy's knowledge to drive was in the car in the sphere. That's... So that's a clue for what he's up to. But... Yeah. So the Scarface man. Should we call him by his name? For when his name is revealed, but I, I have okay, him fair. in my notes as White Hat, but yeah. I call oh, him Scarman. I call him Scarface, but anyway, he's Scarface on his is ship. fine, so Scarface... He's on his ship, and he's like, tell me about the Doctor. And so the ship starts playing a Tom Baker clip reel. Yeah, basically. Of all, like, all sorts of stuff, you know, so there's City of Death, there's Creature from the Pit, there's all these other things, all these other various stories, I don't know them all, but... It's just a Tom Baker clip reel, and it's like, hmm, that's the Doctor, eh? Ooh, I must defeat him. We get some more expositions. Uh, the Doctor and Ramana are still looking for books about Sally Avon, an infamous Gallifreyan criminal, and also the Doctor's boyhood hero. Yeah, he, he kind that's of admired him, doctor. despite the fact he was a criminal. Ramana's horrified, but he's a criminal, so? I mean, you know, the Doctor would like someone like that, but... He was in prison somewhere or other before the Doctor was born. Where was that? Oh, I don't know where that is. Uh, but Cronotus finally remembers that Chris Parsons is the one who borrowed the books. And so the Doctor is going to head off to find him. Also, we should mention that uh, Cronotus is very is very uh, not complimentary about Sally Avon. Yeah. He's like, I, I, you know, I taught him and, and good riddance to him. And, you know, the universe is better off without him. So uh, that's interesting, given what we found out later on. So back at the lab, meanwhile, where the doctor's heading to, Parsons' friend uh, Claire is there examining the book. And she's like, well, you should probably ask the guy you borrowed it from about, about it if it's so fucked up. And so that leads to the doctor's riding his bike to go and see and find Parsons. And Parsons is riding his bike to go back to Kronotus. And the two just barely miss each other. So, whoopsie doopsie. Yeah. And then it's time for the first villain confrontation. Because here comes Scarface back to the uh, back to Cambridge University. The porter just lets him go in. Like he said, you know, is, is he, is he uh, free now? So, yeah, so he just strides in. And of course... I want the book, Professor. Um, you can't have the book. Well, do you want to see what's in this magic bag? And this bag that he's been carrying around from the beginning is what the, the voices are coming from. Orb! Orb. Oh. Anyway, out comes the orb. And uh, it latches onto the Professor and 
fucking he, like, he goes Argh! and falls down. Like he's Don't in... fight it or you will die. It attacks him like he's in an episode of The Prisoner. <laughs> God. I mean, come on, that had to be where he got the you idea. Know, I know, mean, I mean... I once tried putting my orb on someone's head, and uh, I got banned for that, but, um... Whoa, whoa, too much. <laughs> God. There's a limit, there's a line in the sand, you've just crossed it. So... <laughs> you couldn't even see the line in the sand, Kachiri. You're out of sand altogether there. <laughs> We're in the water now. Yeah, you're in the ocean, you're in the, you're in the ocean. So... <laughs> blub, blub, fish people. Anyway. Damn it! <laughs> See what you made me do hey, now? There's Yaz down here. You made me see. Oh, no. <laughs> oh my god. Don't you mean Thasman? <laughs> I love the fact you didn't realize for a minute either of you. Oh I, my god. I, I just let him do it. Oh, I see. You, you came over to hang himself. How how courteous of you. I didn't want to be. I didn't want to be that. Um, actually, it's Yaz, not Thasman. Oh, you could have stopped me and said, hey, you just said Thasman. Like, oh, sorry, man. Uh, <laughs> what the hell was that voice? It's like my anus is bleeding. What did uh, you do what you meant? So back to Sharda then. <laughs> yeah. So the the professor is is out the floor. He's alive, but his mind has been drained, or he's alive for the time being. The doctor has yeah. gone to see Chris. He finds Claire instead. Claire has carbon dated the book. The carbon dating comes out at minus twenty thousand years old. What? I don't think that's how carbon dating works. It definitely isn't. No. Uh, it's also not a not a book, but uh, more about that. And then we get a weird moment where we should have a bigger on the inside uh, moment for somebody. And Romana completely oh. curtails it. Well, we kind of do, don't we? Yeah, because Romana's in the TARDIS. is like, Professor, uh, oh my God, Professor. Then K9 turns up. Cat's very happy about that, I'm sure. Well, she's not exactly the happiest because it's the David Priorly K9. Yeah, this this would have been his last appearance. Yeah. Instead of the horns and the Imon. Yeah. Uh, so she finds the professor half dead on the floor. And then Chris turns up, but he hasn't got the book with him. He's like, what the fuck is going on? So oh, holy shit, a robot dog. Romana is like, go in the TARDIS. And th this is quite funny. Giving him directions in the TARDIS. Yeah. It's like second corridor on the left, down three, second corridor on the left, don't tell me, second corridor on the left, no, it's up the high shelf. <laughs> what, in there? And he goes in and he comes out and he's like, what the fuck? Yeah, but then she, as I said, Romana curtails that moment. It's like, go and get the medicine, Chris. We don't have time for your running gag. Go get it. The best one is still the Pope. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I mean, then again, it's Romana. Like, you know, the doctor gives a shit about it, but Romana's just like, for fuck's sake, it's a turret. It's bigger on the inside. Blah, blah, blah. Go I always like Ramona too, but I think she's really good in this. I, I mean, I love Ramona too. Also love her outfit. Yeah. Like a May Queen or something. But it works. Yep. Um, And then there's a really, really interesting uh, moment where Morse code with somebody's hearts. That's her hearts, yeah. This is an interesting. Beware interesting the spears. Beware Skagra. Beware Shada. The secret is in the. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, isn't that like the most annoying thing though? When Ryers that do always that. happens. Yeah. I mean, it, I mean, it's Douglas Adams. They they spoof it with the, with the naked gun films. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, it's Douglas Adams. So. Whatever the secret is in, we don't find out because the professor has now died. And K9 is just like so matter of fact, it's like uh, all life functions have ceased to cease to exist. He is now dead. Oh well. Well. Oh no, anyway. God <laughs> <laughs> almighty. Joke's on me, I've now got to include that clip again. <laughs> <laughs> just like you have to include that monkey rolling his eyes and banging the drums. Which I did. And which you did again. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, you mean right now? No, no, I didn't. Uh, oh, well, well, we'll fucking find out when you get to the editing suite. I probably will. So then we get the first real confrontation between the villain and the Doctor. And it's a good one. And Christopher Neem, I think, is a perfect fit to play the villain. Who we can yeah. now call Skagra, because, you know, the Professor has revealed it. So this is Skagra. 
Ooh, Skagra. The guy in the Flash Gordon outfit is Skagra. And... Skagra! Oh, it's impossible! Do you feel better for that? Yeah. Good, let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... It's, it's, it's typical, you know, villain confrontation, like, um, Doctor, you will help me or you will die. I don't think so. So, it then leads to a, a lengthy but rather brilliant chase sequence where the sphere comes out of the bag. Tom Baker's on a bicycle. So he just flees on the bicycle. And it is a long chase. It's a bit of right has got to eat. But there is one wonderful moment in the chase that I have to point out. Yeah. He's pedalling, he's pedalling, he's pedalling. He presses a nose tightly and so says, I do beg your pardon, gets off the bike and continues rocking. There are another there are a couple of bits in this chase I need to point out. Firstly the uh, male choir. Yeah, this was the, interesting. Who, uh, it, it, in the special features on the thing, uh, the, there's one of the guys from the choir and he mentions that he basically found out at the pub that they were filming a Doctor Who at Cambridge. And he was like, Oh, can me and my mates be in it? We're the male choir and they're like, Sure, be here ten o'clock. And so they come at 10 o'clock in the morning and they start singing and the camera's rolling and then Tom Baker goes by on his bike. And then they're like, oh boy, I can't wait to see us on TV. Oh wait, yeah, this about Doctor that. Who doesn't have anything to do with Cambridge. And even better. Oh, wait, this Doctor Who doesn't even have anything to do with Cambridge. Wait, you know, does this Doctor, what the fuck? Even better. They gave Tom Baker an honorary degree for his part in this and they didn't get to appear on television until 2017. Whoops. I never. And I think it's there's also a part where the spear is chasing him and it knocks someone flat on their ass. Yeah, that's interesting. But yeah, so the doctor is cornered in an alleyway. He's trying to get up on a fence, and the spear is slowly advancing on him. Oh no! Wait, there's no credits music. This is an omnibus. Oh hey, here's Romana. Yeah, he's saved by five doctors' footage. Which yeah, this is the where they use. This is what they use at the end of Five Doctors when they fix the time warp. But, you know, it's funny because you look at the five doctors and you see it's just a shot. You look at it here and you can see, oh, we slapped a spear on top of the footage. Yeah, but... The most intimidating spear ever! I mean, again, Sonic 3, but... There's, uh... there's, there's, there's an alternate version of five doctors. The spear gets caught up in the death zone, too. <laughs> it just oh fights, God. It, it fights the rest of Warrior Robot. Battle of the Century. Holy shit. Uh, we then get a bit inside the study where they decide to go and uh, pursue Skagra. And Tom Baker gets a great ad lib in here. Hi. Come on, you too, Bristol. <laughs> but also, we should mention Cronotus uh, pulls an Obi-Wan and Force fades away. Yeah, that's strange, because Chris is like, oh, I, I can't take his eyes, uh, dead eyes staring at me. Can I close them? Yeah, go ahead. What the hell? And he also had this collar around him that um, Romana had put on him to stabilize him. That's never uh, mentioned again. Yeah. Something meanwhile, mentioned in the classic Doctor Who story? Well, it's shock. Meanwhile, we get meanwhile, one of the strangest uses of an extra I've ever seen on this show. Skagra's evil scheme! While I'm here trying to take over the galaxy, I how to fish! What? Why? I... On the one hand, I don't know why this is here, but on the other hand, I'm glad this is here because it's unintentionally funny. I don't know. There's just a, a random fisherman just just c casting on the on the banks of the river. I think it's the River Cam again. No, it's not the Cam. It's just a river because the Cam's where they were punting. Yeah. You can't fish in the Cam. That's for sure. Okay. It's like public public river, pu public land. Oh yeah. Um. You you don't want pee pee poo poo fish. No, you do not want pee pee poo poo fish. Or even the dope fish. Or even the dope fish. That's a but very yeah. that's a very deep cut. But um yeah, this this guy's just casting. The orb attacks him, <laughs> drains his mind, and then just for good measure, he falls in the river and drowns. Great. What? He's Oh no, I'm too stupid to swim. <laughs> they didn't have to include this in the in the reconstruction. <laughs> yeah. Wait, well, he's Honestly... not just too stupid to swim, he's too unconscious to swim. Because it completely drains his mind. Claire, meanwhile, has showed up at Cronotus's to figure out what's going on. But no one's there. 
And so uh, the TARDIS is out of fe- it lands in the field and sees the spear to sort of vanish. And they head out. And Skag goes up on the ship like, what in the fuck is that blue box? He... So the doctor's walking through the field. He's walking. Ow, my nose! Oh, this is interesting. So Tom Baker and uh, Daniel Hill have to mime the ship is there. <laughs> Straight out, of, straight out of Star Trek Four, this. R- Roman is not having any of this nonsense. <laughs> I do love that they ask K9 about it, and K9 says insufficient data, which y- you know what that makes me think of. Yeah, that outtake. Yeah, you, yeah, you never know. You never fucking know the answer when it's important. <laughs> oh my god. Um, there's an even better bit, insufficient data bit later on with K9. Oh, yeah. But uh, then Skagger's like, oh, it's the doctor. And rolls out the red carpet for him. Literally. Yeah, there's a red carpet in the middle of the field. <laughs> that's that's very Douglas Adams. Was that know? always well, there? Did, did he roll it out for him? Or wasn't it this carpet was this there to begin with? I can't remember. No, he rolled it's... it out for him. Oh, yeah, it wasn't there and then it came out. <laughs> Does he even say, that's... I'm going to roll out the red carpet for you, Doctor? I don't call if he says it but he literally does it either either way it works so they all head into the ship and then romana and parsons uh get teleported away oh dear the cosmic cube gets them yeah skagra meanwhile he has the book because the doctor dropped the book during the bike chase and he got it and so he's like okay read me the book doctor (laughs) Oh, I'm, I'm horribly stupid. I can't read. Can I just say that um, Tom Baker reading Gallifreyan, it sounds like gobbledygook. It is gobbledygook. Yeah. In the plot, it's gobbledygook. Yeah. He's like, uh, when I get to the bottom of the first page, you'd be asleep and I escape. I escaped. But no, it's like, no, you not, can't fool the me, master. doctor. Wrong time, Lord. This book, is writ- this book is obviously written in code. And again, the doctor is repeating, oh, no, don't question me about the book. I'm so stupid. I'm really, really stupid. Look, look, you hear, you see this clip from UHF with the karate guy? That's me. Stupid. <laughs> I'm so stupid. It, it doesn't work. The orb attacks the doctor, and Tom Baker well, responds by uh, imitating a slaughtered sheep. Oh, God. What the hell was that sound he made? I don't know, but... uh. Yeah. Keep, keep, oh no, the doctor's dead. Put a pin in that whole. I'm I'm stupid. I'm really really stupid. We got to put a pin in that. It, it does have a, a point to it, believe it or not. So, Romana, the canine, and Chris are locked in a room with no doors. Oh, and we I get love this, this funny bit where Chris is like, "I was supposed to be uh, presenting a paper tonight, disproving life on other planets." Well, I guess that's scrap now. I, I think he says it will need some heavy rewrites or something. Yeah. And then there's a great there's a great bit where Romana is frustrated that they can't get out of the cell. So she just shouts, Oh, blast it! And then he kind of goes, Please, duck! And he shoots a laser at the wall. God. But like did you catch Wars. the mistake here? No. Because Parsons is a bit too slow to do it, the laser hits him. Oh. <laughs> Or appears to hit him anyway. It's, it's a they production error. They could have put the laser literally anywhere else. Yeah. I mean, it's... I mean, no matter what fucking way he ducks, it's like the job of the visual effects guy to go, okay, laser go here. Uh, okay, laser go through man. Huh? It's okay. that girl getting shot all over again in the two that other yeah, top story. Nightmare... Wait, that was Nightmare Eden. That was two stories later. Yeah. Oh, had... Two stories ago. Yeah, holy shit. Maybe it was the same person. <laughs> well, it's season 17 and not being able to aim the lasers right. I have no idea, but... Yeah. Um... It's a, the editor is just like, oh man, these twenty-hour days are just, oh, yeah, whatever. There was a shit. There's there's a very funny um that's that's a very funny bit, and then um, Ramona's like, oh, I wish I could get out of here, and she does. <laughs> that's it. That's what we have to do. I wish you could. Oh, why is it not working? <laughs> because you're not important, Chris. Sorry. God. But uh, yeah, the, the cosmic cube of light is Romana is beamed out somewhere. It doesn't work for Chris. There's a fun bit where he's about to say he says blast, and then K 9s laser starts to come out. Never mind K nine, good dog. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we should also mention that Claire has gone to Wilkins. Like, is Cronus and Pals left? Because uh, I don't know. There's nobody in there. 
this is the sexist bit. Yeah. Slightly. Again, it was the style at the time, but... And also the style of the time. The past was a mistake. I think we can agree with that. Yeah. Basically, she's like, we need to find the professor. Have you seen him? No, miss. He's in study, isn't he? He's not there. Well, in that case, I'll uh, I'll go and find him. And as, as so you go back to his study, and as she leaves, he's like, yeah, right. Like, he's he's really left. The youth of today. Uh. Yeah, Christ. Maybe it's so, not sexist. Maybe it's just being uh, ageist. And to youth. Maybe. So, Skagra has got Romana as a captive, and they're going to take the TARDIS. Because he's got the doctor's key, so it's like, oh, okay, oh no! So now he's got the TARDIS, and they're time traveling off somewhere or other. And this is the bit, the fun bit with K9 and Chris. Because uh, Chris yeah. says to K9 says, insufficient data, insufficient data. What does that mean? Insufficient data! <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> The doctor, the doctor, meanwhile, is not dead, because he's like, "Oh, it was my, it was my genius scheme. I let the spear believe I was stupid, so that I could, it couldn't drain my brain completely." It took a copy of but his mind. But it still drains everything else. Yeah, it took a copy of his mind rather than his his own mind. I don't understand that. No one else has been able to do that. Also, he's well, dead. What also, yeah, he's dead. the computer picks up and it's like, you're, and the computer picks up and it's like, wait a minute, you, you, where's Skagra gone? I can't help you. You're an enemy of my, my Lord Skagra. Why aren't you dead? Oh, yeah, because of my brain thing. Wait a minute. Well, you should be dead. Well, wait, I am dead then. Well, that means I can't be a threat to Skagra, and that means you can help me. And the computer's like, that makes sense. And tells him, more, and tells him all the shit, and then he's like, wait, why is it getting stuffy in here? Well, I'm programmed to conserve oxygen. Dead people don't eat oxygen, so you should be fine. Oh. Shit. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I do like that bit, Ryan. Like, you know, you think the doctor's outsmarting the computer, and the computer's like, reverse card. Well, he... <laughs> well, he says that, you know, the, the computer operates on blind logic, therefore, logic is infallible, but it's also able to be tricked. Because it's blind but logic, you can't think. Lucky canine and Parsons get teleported out, so the computer turns on the oxygen before the doctor suffocates. Chris gets pop, gets beamed out because um, the doctor says, you know, my friends are no threat to you, so let them go. So the ship lets them go. And the ship is just called so, Ship. We'll just call it Ship. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's the name of the ship, yeah. We'll just say the ship. Or the ship's computer, whatever. Claire is back at the uh, at Kronos' place, and uh, she opens up a cabinet and finds some weird, like, wires and consoles and shit, and then, like, panels open up, and there's, like, a goddamn control panel. I actually and, love uh, this reveal. She the... pulls the lever, and shit goes haywire. I, I actually love this reveal that the study is a TARDIS. Ooh, it was a professor's wild, TARDIS all along. Now that yeah. does cause some continuity issues with TARDISes within TARDISes. I mean, yeah. because that has been established to be a very bad thing for the universe. I mean, with yeah, some sometimes it's lesser than others. When the plot demands it, it's lesser than others. Yeah. I mean, are we forgetting about the fact that early on is established that there's only one way you insert the key into the TARDIS, any other way will melt the key and make the TARDIS unusable? Yeah, you're right. You're absolutely really? right. Interesting. So, uh, yeah, and then Will yeah, comes I mean, back. That was you. that was the whole dilemma with um, Susan in like the very first story. Like when uh, Ian was like, "Oh, I can go up the TARDIS and be fine." No, you can't. Only me or my grandpa can because you know there's 17 different ways you can enter the key and only one of them will open it. Yeah, right. he's right. Interesting. Uh, I I. I must not have caught that when I was watching the original. But, uh, Wilkin, fucking Wilkin comes back and he's like, hello, hello, and opens the door and is like, <laughs> Yeah, Wilkin opens the door and finds a Pip Madeley bit. <laughs> I'm not even joking. He, he got, like, what, 30 days out of this bit? I don't remember if any of them were, like, how good a lot of them were, but he certainly did that. Of the actor just look, opening the door and like Bleh. again, he, he got multiple months out of the Mavellans looking at a, mon a computer monitor. God sakes! Also from season seventeen. Wow, God. 
Just all the season 17 love today. <laughs> yeah, so... Mm -hmm. Anyway, moving on with the uh, story. Yeah, the, the, the plot now um, accelerates. So Chris saves the Doctor because him being on the ship means, oh, the oxygen spot needs to be turned back on because there's a living person here and not a dead one. Yeah. Uh, but he's an enemy of Skagra, so the ship's not going to work for him either. But yeah, at least you know. this saves the Doctor, so that's good. But the doctor can convince the ship because hey, you know, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm still dead, so I'm, I'm the, I'm the late enemy of Skagra. So what, what's he up to while I'm being here dead? And the ship can't tell him where Skagra's gone, not because it, it, it knows and it's trying to conceal it. The ship doesn't know. Mm. It's not lying because it's a machine; it can't lie. It isn't programmed to lie, so the ship literally doesn't know where her lord because it's a female voice yeah where her master has gone but and where well, he's before... gone is a control ship and he gets this big monologue with romana where he's like look out at the stars what do they do what are, what, are, what are they doing they're not doing anything exactly just like all the useless people out orbiting those stars doing nothing just like entropy which is interesting because the next season is a lot about entropy the, Absolutely. the last Tom Baker series. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's interesting that it pops up here. And I have meaning and purpose in this universe because I am clever. And it's like, oh, God, he's like one of those fucking Nazis from Robot now. Oh, oh good Lord. I know quantum physics. Bow to me. Oh, good Lord. You're right. So, you know, his scheme is a lot more grandiose. Well, that's that character room right before me. Thanks for that. Yeah, his scheme is more grandiose and maniacal than fucking. I know physics. I'm gonna blow up the earth. But you know, and he also has his own servants, the Krargs. What even are these things? <laughs> Big walking lumps of metal. Big black and red hemorrhoids. Look at them. Oh God. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it wouldn't be classic Doctor Who without the shitty monster with it yeah and can i mention the 1992 version of sharda briefly because uh -huh. i can't remember if it's the introduction or it's a trailer and it's just tom it's baker in a doctor who exhibit yeah this is the intro to the tape this is how the tape this yeah this is the intro the to the begins. tape and it's just it's just him and he's got like look at all these monsters i fought as the doctor Dalek, Cybermen, the Krogs. Dungeon Warrior Robot, Aquatic Silurian. Yeah. Except he doesn't fucking say Aquatic doesn't. Silurian. I can't no. fucking get, get. The Krogs. Calm Wait. down, calm the down. The Krogs? Have... Shut up! He puts his, claps his hand over his face. Yeah. Uh, that's an interesting um, introduction to that tape. But, um, thankfully, we, we, get, we now have the full thing that courtesy of uh, animation. Yeah. And a bit of reworking. And it, it does the job. So the Krogs then are the goon squad for for uh, Skagra. They are being generated by, uh, inside the command ship. Yep. Um, not much more is, is really explained about what these things are. They're clearly dangerous. They're a spooky monster. How about they're, this next... they're, they're just pi the Pi Patrol, but thicker. <laughs> yeah, um, the, the Pi Patrol were never that big. That's why I said there's a pie patrol but thicker. Or oh, were they big? They might have been bigger in the 2017 uh, film version. Now I think about it. Extra thick. Where they where they were just Sheet. like rock made into shape. So actually, you could be right. So this next bit is absolutely wild. So the doctor is just like, okay, ship. You know what? Just take us to the last place Skagra was before he came to planet Earth. Oh, okay, sure. Uh, how long is it going to take us to get there? Uh, 39 years. 39 years! Three months. Wait, wait, It'll take wait, a three months. Oh, oh, thir oh I, wrote, I wrote years in my notes. Uh, three months. 39 days. It's 39... Um... Why the fuck did I write 39 years? I was distracted, I guess. Yeah, maybe. But uh, it, it, the journey will take three months. Oh, that's far too slow. Listen, ship, um, don't question this. I'm just going to give you some uh, some coordinates. <laughs> I'm going to reprogram you now. Necronorn, it's, it's more, uh, he was, uh, rewriting the ship's code. Yeah, so yeah, it can travel in time. Catch this into this, reverse this, and there's a bit. Uh, reverse the shields on this thing. 
imminent core destruction in uh, five seconds. Uh, reverse it by minus ten points. Sorry. Yeah, the, the, sh the ship will explode in twelve se in twelve seconds. Oh, did I, did I say the, ten? I meant minus ten. Sorry. And the upshot of all this is he turns the ship purely by verbally altering components. He turns it into a fucking TARDIS. I wish that they had been able to put, to make this before the strike happened. So just had the model ship. I need to see how this was done in real time. I mean, it'd probably just be a shitty little ship model going. Foo, 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 and yeah, probably as opposed to an animation like it is here. Yeah. So back in Chronosis' room, Claire wakes up and she's like, "What the fuck happened?" And Chronosis is in his pajamas and he's like, "What the fuck happened?" And wait a minute. Yeah, the professor's I he alive. Was dead. Uh, not only is he alive, he's now dressed in a nightshirt. <laughs> Wow, he really did such a nice shirt at on. You fool, it's a nice shirt at wrestle on. <laughs> anyway, they're outside of time because this entire room is a TARDIS. Like you said, so... Ooh. So they're kind of just in between. Here, and, and they're just they're just vibing for now. Claire survi uh, made him survive because when she fiddled with the TARDIS, it brought him back it to life because the TARDIS... The reason why his body disappeared was not that um, he, he was dead. It was his TARDIS interfering to save his life. Yeah. Just go with it. <laughs> well, yeah. so, we'll explain later. P Professor's a good character, so I don't mind that he's, he's been brought back here. Because yeah. he was supposed so, to just die, was... and Douglas was like, oh, I like this guy, let's bring him back. <laughs> so uh, back at Skagra's command base, he's like, oh, the book! It's the key to Shada." The ancient prison planet of the time. Shada! Thank you. We already got that in there, but yeah. yeah. But uh, all the time lords have been induced to forget Shada. By who? I don't know. The division? No, wait, no. No, shit, no, no, no. Shut up. No, no. Shush. <laughs> anyway, Skagra ninjas is did it. Ninjas did it. Gallifrey and ninjas did it. <laughs> Gallifrey and ninjas. You just described a division. A Gallifrey wizard did it. Shut up. <laughs> it was <clears throat> Rassilon. Yeah, let's go with that. Rassilon basically yeah. ruins everything. Rassilon ruins everything. So yeah, Skagra's meddling with mind transference and he wants to get to Shada. And so he checks his, he checks the doctor's memories of reading the book. And uh, oops, Romana gives him a clue by accident. Yeah. That's a shame. What is it she does? What is it she does? I can't remember. Uh, oh, I didn't write it, did I? You write it down? No. I clearly did not. Hang on. Fuck. Tardis Professionalism, Wiki... everybody! Tardis... Professionalism. Shut up. Tardis Wiki to the rescue. Yeah. Tardis Wiki to the rescue. As you say, as you say, oh no, this scene totally happened at this point, well, not ten minutes before. We're, oh, wait, we're so big from friends. Tardis Wiki from two weeks ago. No! She, she helps him realize that the... um. The book, turn the page to the book, takes him to Shada. Oh, yeah. Time runs backwards over the book or some shit. Yeah. Or she doesn't so do he, Oh, yeah. So he that. needs to flip to the last page. And when he does, he'll be in the dimension where the prison is. So the the uh, Skagra ship uh, materializes on the think tank station from before. And, uh, uh oh, there's a Krog on here. Uh, K9, zap it, would you? We get a long scene where K9 is just fighting off this Krog with his laser. So they dock on the space station and the Doctor and Chris head out, which really doesn't match the footage because the animation part is like, oh, holy shit, it's a Krog! Oh my god, we gotta get out of here! And then in the in the footage, they just walk out, oh, here, we're here, Parsons, it's great. So maybe that Krog wasn't there originally? Yeah, maybe not. It, it doesn't match, but there's a really funny bit where Chris is like, "Oh man, this we are we're here already. I mean, this should be impossible. I mean, you can't go faster than light. What about the theory of relativity?" And I was like, "You know Einstein, and Planck, and Newton. Wow, you've got a lot to unlearn." <laughs> that is pure Douglas Adams right there. Absolutely, yeah. And so they find all the guys from the opening, and now they're all old as fuck, like Rip Van Winkle. They are. Because it's been, it's been a few, uh, few months. It's been one week since you looked at oh, me. Oh, you set him off. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, they're a Canadian I band. Mean, they gotta... I mean, we have to do something that's uh, not hit the button cat. 
Yeah. What's that? Hit the button? Hit the button, Rain! How about no? Yeah, but you won't know what button it is until you see it in post-production. So... That's the surprise! Now I gotta watch the podcast and find out, you see? See, everybody wins. I could put anything in there, you, you don't know. <laughs> anyway, so, um... Where the hell was I? Uh, yeah, they're, they're on gonna... Think Tank, and the, uh, the five victims from the beginning are there. They've aged terribly. One's got fingernails the size of Wolverine's claws. God almighty. Well, they have. Uh, so the Doctor gets a brilliant idea. <laughs> well, before that, I should mention that Skagger and mine are back in the TARDIS, and, he's, and Skagger's like, of course! When I turn the book, this the rotor moves. Time runs backwards over the books. So if I turn to the last page, we'll find Shada, and then I'll find Sally Avon. Every time he says Sally Avon, my mind keep, keeps crunching it to Salieri. Salisbury steak? Mm, I'm hungry. No, no, no. Salieri. Oh, this is dead! Most... And I have killed him! Mozart's rifle. <laughs> also, that's an amazing performance in, in, uh, in that film. Uh, by F. Murray uh, Abraham. Yes. Amadeus? Yes. Yeah. Amadeus. I absolve you as he's being led out into the... Into the uh, Sanatorium. So, uh, all, while this, while Tom Baker and uh, Parsons are doing their thing, uh, Canine's blasting a Krog in live action, and I'm not sure if this is like a, a filmed insert they did now or one they did in 1980. But we do see a live action Krog in 1980, and it's glorious. <laughs> but uh, for now, the Doctor has a genius idea. Yeah. Hey, Chris, um, why don't you sit down on that empty seat there? Is it going to hurt? Probably. Oh. He connects uh, one of the victims of the brain drain to Chris's mind. So I think he borrows a part of Chris's um, functions. Mental energy. Yeah. Mental energy. Did he, no, no. Did he say like an insult? Like, uh, I need to use the part that you're definitely not using right now anyway. Or something like that. Something like that, yeah. <laughs> He's not quite so as get... with it, but yeah. And so we get some exposition. Yeah, the, the man that he's chosen is Caldera. Who was Oh some... wait, did we did we already skip past the part what the name of this uh, space station is? Think tank. Uh, think tank or like I A I S or some shit like well, that. Well no 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 no. I think the, the initials are ASS and they point at the plaque at the wall. And I'm like, Douglas Adams definitely made this uh, space station nice sound Nice try. Way. It's ASD. Just so... It's ASD. It's Advanced State of Decay. Well, I mean, it still looks like they wrote ass on the wall. It looks nothing like it, Kachiri. It clears as ASD. Like to me. I, st I still remember that video game where they couldn't put the initials in his ass and they were very upset about it. Oh my god. What are those some initials, though? What if your name is Andrew Sean Stevenson? You can't put your initials into the game. Anyway. Um, yeah, so he talks to Caldera. He shakes hands with all the uh, intellectuals because they're like famous scientists. Famous um, f m names in their particular fields. Unfortunately, uh, K-9's laser is out of power and here's the Krog. Oh. Don't you just love 1980 Doctor Who? <laughs> so this is just wild. Uh, oh, look at it. I, I love it. How do we get out of this? Oh, uh, Chris, buy me 10 seconds. I need 10 seconds to do something. So Chris puts his fists up <laughs> to the no, crowd. No, we we, we got to talk about the, We got to talk about the stupid crowd. You can't really see it in motion, but it's like, it's like just this gray thing, but they've done something to the chest, put a green screen or something on the chest. So it's like glowing. Like lava? It but... looks like it looks like the the Banjo Tui bus old King Cole. <laughs> Go, and I cannot stress this enough. Huh. Huh. Have you seen do you have you seen the uh, footage of Skyward Sword? No. This thing kinda of looks like the imprisoned. I see. Yes. That sounds, yeah, that sounds like it, it does. That sounds like a Dark Souls. Yeah, though. Kachiri knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, well, and then, you know, it's even worse. It looks worse in uh, Hyrule Warriors than Prison does. Oh, but God, yeah. But yeah, no, yeah. that's definitely it. That's definitely it. It looks like the Imprisoned, yes. Ray, 
Rainy, Rainy, I put a cryogene in prison dub. I will do that. So people were like, what the fuck yeah. is this shit? I mean, it, it's it's like the more the body of it, because the top of it is, you can't really see the top of it. And the imprison... Well, it, it's it's just the skin texture. Just yeah, think of, is. um... Like, instead of a bird with feathers, just think of each feather being like this plate or something. It's black shards of something, isn't it? Like, jagged yeah, shards. Yeah, it's, it's, it's hard to explain. We're, so, we're doing uh, a good enough job, I it's think. It's the Praxis! Just think of if, if uh, a monster had the Praxis skin and wasn't dying from it. And you were oh, doing so Christ. well as well. So, <laughs> what a shame. Uh, so, anyway, well, how are we going to get out of this sticky situation? Well, the crow's going to start killing the Think Tank members. What? And the Doctor and Chris are just going to leg it while it What, what does was that, that 10 seconds for? Because the Doctor didn't do anything and they just run away. Well, the doctor ran to, like, one corner of the room, just stood there for a few minutes, and this ran out. This is so strange. And this is this is not animation. This is actually filmed footage. No, no, they really filmed this bit. This is real. <laughs> um, So there's a chase between them and the Krog. Having killed a few of the Think Tank members, the door that leads to ship is jammed. The Krog is chasing after them very slowly, it has to be said. Oh my. It gets trapped uh, behind a door just as K9 escapes. They get into ship and Think Tank blows up. Can I just point out how good this explosion looks? It's... Uh, yeah, that's a good practical explosion. This is a think. genuinely impressive practical effect. Um, Doctor Who was very good at blowing models up. This is where the, the budget went, clearly. Remember, remember in Warrior's Gate at the end when they blow up the gate in the uh, big ship? That was that was good. I, I could have like forgiven them if they'd just done an, anim an animated explosion of this of the space station. No, they go to town. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I'm not sure if they blew it up in 1980 or they blew it up in 2017. But either way, it looks like a, a 70s model, but <laughs> yeah. it's impressive so, work regardless. We get an important scene then with Claire and the professor. They're trying to fix his TARDIS, and Claire's like, "I don't know shit about this outer space shit." And Kronos is like, "Okay, you know what?" I'm going to do a thing here, Claire. But I'm only going to do it one time. I don't want you to ever talk about it again. Okay? Okay. And then he takes off his glasses, and his eyes start glowing. And her eyes start glowing. And then he, and then he's like, okay, what do you got there in your hand? And she lists off the techno battle because she knows what it is now. She's like, oh, is it, is it, we, can, we can put the hydropower thing in the thing, and then we can fix this. You know. Good idea. Let's start. <laughs> can we just talk about how she's got a completely different look to herself now? Yeah, her was hair's that, down. She's got her glasses off. That was an aid of, of something, was it? Was was that just like a continuity error, or I don't, I don't know. Or maybe it's because she's now the the Chrono, whatever, kind of like the Doctor Donna. But this is this is before Chrono. this is before he hypnotizes her. Well, he doesn't hypnotize. No, he goes all demon headmaster on her. Look into my eyes. Yeah. Well, that's. Well, that would be... Does it too yeah, but, but no, his what? eyes literally start glowing, so come on, it's the Demon Hair Master, but you're right. It's not anyway, so much it's more like he's putting the knowledge from his mind into hers. Would it be in that? Yeah, where did we hear about that ability <laughs> from earlier? Hmm. Well, we'll, we'll find it anyway. But also, if they... We get an explanation why the, the Professor is now alive. So the uh -huh. tar, his target did a thing, it stopped from two separate time continuums... And if we move too far away from the continuum, I'm going to die again, Claire. So please don't touch anything. Yeah. So the so Skagra's old ship lands at his command outpost, and the Doctor and Chris hopefully get escorted to Skagra by a renegade Krog. And then Skagra gets to monologue about his evil scheme! As the Doctor even has a line that says, Oh God, you're not going to monologue about an evil scheme, are you? There's quite a lot for, for the dialogue that is that has been added in later for the animated scenes. Mm. There's quite a bit of knowing humor in them. I mean, it's a Douglas Adams. Like there's there's bits where they re repeat them themselves, but like they do it with, with a wink to the camera, like not literally, but you know what I mean. Yeah. I, again, they're reading Douglas Adams dialogue. He wrote the entire thing. They just never filmed it. Like there's a bit when they're running away. It's, 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 it's I'm making them think we're going to the t we're heading to the TARDIS. Well, what are we doing? We're heading to the TARDIS, of course. <laughs> so, Skagra's like, I have a great purpose! Oh, what, you're gonna take over the universe? Take over the universe? That's... that's... that's foolish! I'm going to fulfill the natural order of evolution! All of creation will merge into one godlike hive mind! 
The universe will not be mine! The universe will be me! Not a bad line, honestly. Yeah. And so then the doctor and Chris make a clever distraction, so everyone but Romana ma ma manages to escape. They run through the corridors, trying to get to the TARDIS, like I said. But then they see a random wooden door on the ship. And they're like, what the fuck? Oh, crowds are coming. You know what? Fuck it. Let's cut in. And then this that was all animation. And then we cut back to it because it's the room. It's live action. So it's funny because just the door opens. The doctor and Chris run in. They shut the door. They lock it behind them. They turn around. And they're like, what the fuck? Claire, what are you doing here? Professor, what are you doing here? Professor, how are you alive? Yeah. Ooh, what, why, when, and how? One plus two plus two plus one. So, so, so yeah, um, the professor is alive and well. And this is the first time the doctor realizes this. So we have a bit of a scene, a bit, a bit more uh, exposition. It's like, oh, so um, this Skagra, what's he want? He's gonna go and he, he wants to try and find Sally Avon. Well, who's Sally Avon? Oh, he was this criminal. He had this wonderful power to, to transport his mind into other people. And Skagra has the opposite power with his orb to take the minds from other people. He can't put them back in, though. No, he doesn't so have that ability. Skagra, so that's why Skagra needs Sally Avon. Anyway, yeah. now that Skagra knows where to go, they have arrived at Shada. They, they track Skagra by tracking the Doctor's TARDIS in the Professor's TARDIS. So, the Doctor's TARDIS arrives, but Cronus's TARDIS also arrives. Yes. And so we're, we're at Shada, and all the prisoners of Shada are in cryo-freeze, which, as we all know from the Battle of Ransko Alcolos, is a perfectly humane way to imprison someone for eternity. Oh, God. So the, the group split up. The Doctor, the Professor, and K-9 have left the study. Chris and Claire have been left behind, because they're, they're going to be useless. That's not the actual reason. The reason is that they, they'll be safe. Bear that in mind for later. Can I go on about this scene about the prisoners? Go ahead. Because there's a pretty major change here. Oh. That was facilitated by uh, behind the scenes factors. So we do have a list of all the background extra and additional players that were going to be in Sharda, but never got to film their scenes. I'm not. I'm not going to mention who the people are. So if you if you were by some miracle what listening to this, or some of you know was in it and you're listening to this, I apologize for this for the slight, but we just haven't got the time. But it's who the prisoners were going to be. Because in the animation, yeah. there is a purple humanoid alien. There is a woman with face paint. There is somebody that looks a bit like uh, Gregory Rasputin, and a bit like Nero, as a robot and, a, and an orange insect. There's six of them. There were more prisoners originally planned to be in this scene. And they were all historical characters or historical archetypes. We've got, if I can just scroll down to the list. Uh, well, I've, I've mentioned two of them. Rasputin and Nero. But they were going to actually be Rasputin and Nero, not just allegories for them. Lucretia Borgia. Boudicca, apparently. Lady Macbeth, Salome, an executioner, a gladiator, Genghis Khan, and a doll like a sad man in a Zygon. Well. And then it, it just didn't get shot for whatever reason. Well, we know the reason. So mm -hmm. I think the face paint girl is meant to be Boudicca. <laughs> and maybe the orange inset is a stand in for the Zygon. I don't know. These are background characters that only really serve one purpose in the plot. They're freed from their cell by Skagra. And then he's going to drain their minds and use them for his evil scheme. Oh, no. Oh, no. And then we get a really neat twist. That you might be able to see coming. I mean, you've kind of signposted it. But anyway, it's like, Ha ha, Doctor, you're too late! Now I shall release Sally Avon! <laughs> Wait, there's nobody in there. Why is there an empty cutout in a cell? I've gotten a minute now because I obviously went into this blind. It's empty. Was he ever there to begin with? Well, yes. Yeah. Yes, he was. And he's actually in the room with them right now. It's me, Austin! Yeah, the professor goes all demon headmaster again. 
It and there's a, there's, a, there's a neat little bit of along. trickery here where at the same time as in the study, Chris has figured out, wait a minute, we were told that Sally Avon could put his mind into other people and you could suddenly operate his tar the Professor's TARDIS and it's like he put his mind into yours. Oh my God, the Professor is Sally Avon. Cut to Shada. I am Sally Avon. Except he doesn't say that because Sally Avon gets no dialogue in this scene because the actor died. As it so well, well i mean to be fair i mean yeah he would only get a couple lines anyway i guess so they didn't i they, i think he says something at least yeah i think that's that's stock stock audio though maybe but uh yeah i mean they recast david Briarly, who yeah, also died they, but... could, they could have recast carry for two lines of dialogue but anyway so yeah claire and chris are like fuck staying behind let's see what's happening and what's happening is that uh they send the spear out after him and K-9 shoots it with the laser. Good! It reforms into muzzle spears! Bad! Great! <laughs> Very bad. And then they drain, drain the professor and they drain all the criminals and Chris shows up and he gets drained too and now it's like the full plan is initiated. Ha ha ha! Get them, doctor! Ha 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 ha! He's got an Forget army now doctor. of sphere-drained zombies, including Chris. Right. Wow. Well, that's a that's a wild cliffhanger. Yeah. How do we resolve the cliffhanger? K nine, shoot them. He he shoots oh. the Boudicca wannabe. Yeah. In the animation, but then a crow just picks him up and yeets him into the wall. Oh my god! <laughs> it's like that fucking. Oh god! Can you can I don't know if it's fast enough for you to gif the fucking uh, jazz yell. Uh. Ah! I might be able to do like that. A, I mean, I, like I did that, that, that scene in Warriors Gate. Yeah, that was perfect. <laughs> ah! <laughs> ah! Yeah, so they, they hightail it back into Kronos' room. I was about to make Which... a joke about the Academy, but I won't. Uh... <laughs> you don't want to get banned for 10 years? Anyway, Romana... He made it for me anyway. Doctor. Thank you, Kachiri. Uh... So, while they're figured, trying to figure out what to do, Romana says, Hey, Doctor, you know... Uh, your mind is in the. Your mind is also in Skagra's unstoppable hive mind, too, you know, where he drained you before. And I love this bit. He's like, Ramada! And he's like, I give you the medal of a good idea. What the, the hell is of... this? <laughs> it's, it's, it's cute, is what it is. It's very cute. And, and I love the fact that she smiles and then salutes him and he salutes back. Oh, they're so cute. And uh, they, yes. they, they do keep the medal on her for the rest of the scene. Excellent. He's also well, angry at Claire. He's like, I thought I told you to stay in the study. Well, well, we couldn't. We couldn't stay there. Of course you could. You'd have been safe there. The past was no. a mistake. The past was a mistake. Well, I mean, it, it's Doctor Who, you know. You know, though, everyone was like, oh, I'll, I'll just stay here and do nothing. But, yeah, Skagra heads off in the TARDIS with the Doctor's TARDIS with his goons. And, uh,. The Doctor is operating Chronosis Tardis and latches onto his own in the Time Vortex, and they enact a very daring and dumb plan. I can Was this originally in... Well, it had to be, because... It had to be! Yes, it This was. is, I mean, him crawl, literally crawling on his hands and knees into the Tardis. I mean, they didn't do it, but they probably would have done it like that. So that is animation, isn't it? Uh... I think it's a mix because it looks like an actual like guy in a Tom Baker outfit crawling. Okay, well, it's, yeah. it's quite effective. So yeah, you're right. That's pro that's probably about what they would have done in 1980. We have a fairly long se but important scene where uh, we Rom can sum it up quick. I Romana mean, the is gonna... creates a portal to the time vortex and connects the Professor Tardis to the Doctors. There's a funny bit where it's like a. Uh, uh, Manifested it behind the tea trolley. Behind the tea trolley, Ramona, not inside of it. <laughs> it just goes yeah, flying. He, he, he heads into the little portal, and now he's out in the time vortex where the TARDISes are connected by this thin green line, and he's very slowly crawling towards his own TARDIS to try to get in. And Ramona and Claire have to hold down the controls, but they're unstable, and they're getting hotter, and it's burning their hand, and so Ramona's like... Oh, he'll hold it down with a pencil or something. Oh, I can't reach the pencil, Claire. Oh, here, let me do it. And she takes her hand yes! off the fucking buttons. Like, oh, nice going. They they definitely did that joke in Count Ducula as well. <laughs> and I can't remember God. where I can't remember where um 
where uh, if Count Dooku was it before this or after this, I think it was after this because that was also eighties. But there's a bit yeah, where, where they're like, um, they've got a death trap to kill Count Dooku, like a boulder and a rubber band, yeah. and, and, and it, they're straight going, they drop the peg, drop the peg in the hole. What peg? I gave it to you. Oh, there it is. So he goes away from the boulder, it'll catapults them into the into the stratosphere. <laughs> God, but yeah, the line breaks and the doctor falls through the void. Oh no, Doctor Who! And this is animation, oh, isn't it? Oh no! Oh well, I mean, I I don't know what it is. Oh, the falling, yeah. I mean, this is probably it's probably just a cut a cut out of Tom Baker going. Ah. Oh, they found yeah. another news for it after after the uh, the day of the doctor. But yeah, well, of course, of course, Doctor Who isn't dead, and he actually just materializes. In, like, the storehold of his own TARDIS. Convenient. Where it's, like, all these props from his past adventures. He's like, yeah. Oh. yeah. It's time for more so Easter he's... eggs. Yeah, so, that's... what have we got on the shelves here? I know one that I can't mention because it'll make you break out in hives. Because it's from a story you really, really don't like. Uh, wait. Yeah. Well, you're going to you're gonna have to be more specific. The Celestial Toy Maker. That's pretty... What? It's the game from the Celestial Toy Maker, apparently. Oh, good Christ! The the uh, Trilogic game. Oh, oh God, that fucking thing! Oh yeah. Christ! That's one of and them. The, uh, what's another one? There's a Cyberman head. Um, Come on, Tardis Wiki, where are you? Two hours later. I found it. Right. Okay. In the room of the Doctor, it. builds his helmet. You found it, but it's, fun, but it's funnier if we go. There is also the Trilogic game, a Cyberman head, his his time sensor from the Time Monster, Metabellus crystals oh, yeah. from the Green Death, a laser and probe from the Robots of Death, the Polyphase Avatron from the Pirate Planet, a Mavellan gun and a Dalek bomb, Kerensky's time travel equipment from City of Death. All season seventeen in jokes, and the Typhonian communicator from Creature from the Pit. It's all season seventeen in jokes. Okay. Pretty much. Look at that. <laughs> but also, someone put in the thing from the Time Monster. Who the? Who and the, the fuck invasion of the, 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 the Toy time Maker. Oh <laughs> uh, well, balances it out. Yeah, perfectly balanced as all things should be. So, the Doctor's TARDIS lands back on Skagra's command ship. And so does Chronos' room, and K9 comes out and is like, oh, oh no, we're going to stop you. And Skagra's like, ha ha, you fools, you can't do anything to stop me. The doctor's already finished. He's right behind me, isn't he? I knew it. It's some Time Lord in a helmet. Oh, a funny new helmet. Look what I invented in five minutes in he, my he, storeroom. He made a, t a helmet out of the scrap from his TARDIS. <laughs> and then we have a battle of wills. <laughs> no, wait, 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 before we move on. He made a helmet out of this, 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 and in helmet. What? The... Who made this in a cave with scraps? <laughs> no, I... Uh... There's, a, there's a show that's like, and Dave made this, uh... No, I, I, know, I know, hang on, I know the meme you're uh, talking about, and I can get you that. I wish I did, because I have a clue what you're talking about. Hang Dave. on, Dave! I... I've got you. I've got you. I've got you. You don't even need to. I got. I got it. Hang on a moment. Let me just uh, get you that bad boy for you right over here. There you go. Put it in. Make it quickly. Dave constructs a homemade megaphone using only some string, a squirrel, and a megaphone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and the megaphone is funny. <laughs> the doctor creates a helmet out of, out of some Celestial toy maker game. A Dalek bomb and a helmet. Right. What's that? What's that uh, cartoon? Because I recognise it. Dave the Barbarian. Oh my god, that's a, that's a deep cut. I know, but I recognise the meme. So it's it's, it's a funny meme. I know this one. It's a funny anyway, meme. So a battle of wills so breaks like, out. There's still a copy of my brain in here, so I can control the. I can control your mindless prisoners. <laughs> Basically, the mindless yeah, prisoners well, can... are enacting watching a game of tennis. Oh yeah, well I can still control the crowd, so uh, kill him. They they are looking like a, watching a game of tennis because they're like looking back and forth with the Doctor and uh, Skagra. I guess they're deciding who uh, to attack. So full pandemonium breaks out in the thing. Canines here to shoot crags. They're having a mind battle. Romana fucking shoves a crag into a deep fryer vat and just it explodes. Disperses it into mist. Yeah. Jesus. 
And then Romana electrifies the ground and then blows up more Krogs. She's Claire, Claire Romana. Romana. Uh, Romana like takes charge here. She grabs like two wires mm. from the wall, passes one to Claire and yeah. says, "When I say when I say now, now, now." They both electrify the floor. Only the Krogs are affected. They don't explain what that is. They go back into the generator room. They explode. Boom. Oh, they, sorry, they, they don't go back and generate. They just explode. The generator room is is the one Krog that K nine blasts because Kerr is like, "No, you fool! Don't go backwards." Romana just shoves it into the into the generator vat and it dissipates into mist. At this point, Skagger enacts uh, Graham Chapman's famous advice from Monty Python and the Holy Grail. And, run away! Bolts of Skagger ran away! <laughs> brave, brave of Skagger! Yeah, so he runs away to his ship. And uh, it tell- and he gets inside and he gets teleported away. Yeah. Ship, like I need to leave instantly. Where's this cosmic cube taking me? Oh no. <laughs> uh, you know, everything's fine now. Uh, Chris and all the other. Chris wakes up and is like, oh well, everything's resolved. Let's put these prisoners back in Shada. This is um, ethically fucked. <laughs> yeah, it's like, uh, wh- wh- what are you, the 13th Doctor? Jesus. Oh god. Really? So, as it turns out, Cronotus made every- all the Time Lords forget about Shada in order to cover his own escape from Shada. So yeah. they forget the prison, and thus forget that he ever escaped from it? So the whole idea that this is this prison is, you know, forgotten by the Time Lords for a reason, is complete nonsense! Yeah. They know about it, so why aren't they sending someone to deal with it? And so we see Skagra's fate he, as we cut the live action. Oh, game, this is great. Set. So he shows up, he's teleporting, he's like, What are you doing, ship? Let me out! Let me out! Oh, didn't you hear? I got a new master! Well, the ship says it like that, but... Yeah, she, yeah. She said, I'm sorry, I, I can't take your orders, but I'm your master. Negative, I have a new master now. Have you heard about the doctor? Skagger, and Skagger is just increasingly like getting desperate and weeping. He's like, no, let me out! It's even better than that, though, because the ship is basically telling Skagger how good the doctor is. No! It's like, he escaped from Gallifrey on a TARDIS, and, and just hearing this, he's going mad. And Christopher Neen does a fantastic job here of acting out a man losing his mind. Agra, have you heard about the timeless child? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> He's like clawing at his face. It's really good like, acting you know, by Christopher Neem, it really it's, is. It's, it's like for all the pompous sort of, ah, oh, the rule of the universe because I'm a genius, like seeing him come, taking down the peg and being like, mm. It's the perfect way to get rid of him. They don't kill him. No. It's like a fate worse than death for him. Yeah. It's Hearing like uh, trapping some spiders and it's safe. Oh. <laughs> How many 13th Doctor Digs can we make in this podcast? Several. 11 anyway, to, 11 so the billion. Day months, so... <laughs> Will can really, back on Earth, Wilkin literally reported to the cops uh, that Cronus' room had been stolen. And so the cop shows up and he's like, a room has been stolen, really? Well, just come and take a look. And, he knock, and the cop knocks on the door. Oh, come in. And the room is back to normal and Wilkin looks like a complete They're all idiot. drinking tea and sitting around calmly. <laughs> Yeah, the professor, like, uh, the Chris, doctor's reading. Claire, them all sort. Yeah, the doctor's He's reading. reading. Romana's there drinking tea, and then Chris before the Claire, policeman yeah. can say anything, the doctor and Romana just leave. <laughs> it, yeah, he's, he's like. But before he leaves, he's like, "Wait a minute, uh, where did you get that police box, you guys?" And and the team dematerializes. And is like, "What police box?" <laughs> all right, y'all are going down to the station. Yeah, I need to, I need to mention what this is. So. The police officer says we're all taking a trip to Bridewell, or the Bridewell, and that's just slang for police station. Right, and this might be where shot in. This is where the 1992 version ends. I think this was the this original version... intended ending. Yes, but this version has a little coda. It does, and it's really rather kind of cute. So it's a live-action TARDIS set. We should mention that, and uh, we see the Doctor, and he's fiddling with the TARDIS, talking with Romana. And he's talking about how he looks up to Sally Avon and how, you know, Sally Avon was retired in his old age. And then we see as he comes up, it's Tom Baker. No, no, it's something Tom... happens. Like, yeah, he there's an explosion behind the there's... console. Yeah. 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 And he comes up and it's Tom Baker, but it's old Tom Baker from 2017. Yeah. So the implication is the explosion has aged him temporarily. <laughs> I get, but either way, and he's like, you know, I wonder if some, I wonder if someone will come up in a couple of hundred years and say, oh, is that the doctor? Oh, he used to be so much younger. He was a nice old man. 
It's a nice little thing. Yeah, no. But that's how Shot ends. A lovely little bit getting Tom Baker back in this costume one last time. It ends and, with uh, Tom Baker giving a wonderful shitty grin to the camera. And this scene also Tom features ba- Lola Ward as Madame not appearing in this scene. But you can understand why, given their history together. What's that? Tom Baker shitty and grin? Yep. Yeah. I knew it was coming. Again, if you know the context behind that, it's even funnier. What's the context? Yeah. Um, he's revealing a new K9. Ah. K9 has just left the TARDIS to go off with um, one of his companions. Oh no! I no, I know. I remember the scene, and he's he's being all sad about how he's being yeah, alone. Yeah, he just opens then... a crate, and out comes the second K9. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was a uh, Shadda. And again, you understand, can... given the circumstances, why Lala War did not appear on on camera with him. Yeah, he was dating I mean, her during the time of the original shot. They were married. Oh, they were married. <laughs> They're exes. Very messy exes. Yeah. Even while they were filming season eighteen. It was not a. It was. It was not exactly a good split. Yeah. Let's go. That. Let's just put it that way. I mean, if you look at stories like Warriors Gate, they don't even look each other in the fucking eyes. Uh, probably rightly so. So that was Sharda. Yeah. That was that was Shada. Uh, they reconstructed uh, the legendary last episode, and uh, so would you something. mind if I went last with my overall thoughts? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, okay, so do you or Kachiri want to go first? I'll I'll take it, I guess. Okay, you go mind. ahead. So you know, there's there's a whole veneer around Shada because it's the legendary last story that was never completed. And so for about forty, for about thirty-five years, people have been trying to complete it in various, various ways. And finally, sitting down to watch it, it's pretty good. If it had actually aired, it would not be my favorite season seventeen story. It would not beat City of Death or Creature from the Pit, which I fucking love those stories. But this is uh, this is entertaining Doctor Who, written by one of the greats, Douglas Adams. At six parts, it does drag a little, but what six-part Doctor Who story doesn't have a little? It's got a fun scheme. It's got some interesting bits. It's got very witty dialogue. I really do wish that it had been completed, because if only to see more of those live-action crargs, because that little taste of (laughs) low-budget fucking rubber suit monster. Mm, I love it. It's an entertaining story. And it's nice that it's completed now in some fashion. And the animation is good when it needs to, when you need the animation bits. So yeah, it's a it's it gets a thumbs up. Good cheery. Um, uh, mostly the same. Um, I said in my notes, which you know you you replied. Uh, it it the the series did feel very overstayed. Um, everyone did at least have some great moments. Like every character. Had a moment to shine. Uh, even the you know the side characters that normally don't get any moments to shine in some episodes. Um, much better than our current companions we get now in their moments to shine. Um, honestly, I kind of feel like... And I know they didn't want to do this because you know if they would have... Angry fans, but they could have easily cut out two episodes from this. And just made this like a four episode thing, but... Other than that, it was good. It was, it's it's nice to see, you know, everyone got something, though. Nice. Alright. Okay. So before I give my opinions, I just want to mention something uh, interesting. Douglas Adams wrote this, as you know. It wasn't actually one of his most favoured scripts. In fact, he didn't think it was very good. Interesting. So when 1992 came along and they did Shada, he requested his name be taken off of it. Oh. Which it was. I think he would have been happier with this version. I think it's a more authentic attempt to tell the story he was trying to tell back in 1979 or 1980, whenever it was. Was it 1980? It would have have aired in early 1980. Okay, so it would have been, been filmed in 1979, but then 1980 would have come out. Okay, so... For the most part, it's actually really good. It is too fluffy. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I just looked in our chat. <laughs> yeah, I, I saw that gift too, but... Um, 
<laughs> well, now it's in the episode because I reacted to it, so you know. I know, I was trying to get to it. <laughs> I've come for your pickle. So my thoughts on Sharda then. <laughs> Continue. As I say, it's, it's, it is too fluffy for its own good, but the same can be said of a lot of um, Season 17 Tom Baker episodes that oh, aren't City of Death. Fun. Um, but there are some fun characters. Chronotis is a fun character. Chris is quite a fun character, despite the fact he's a useful idiot. Um, Skagra is a decent villain, although his motives are a little generic. Tom Baker's great, of course. Lala Ward's great. K9 is there, blasting Krogs. The Krogs are a wonderful uh, bit of 70s cheese. Doctor Who Monster of the Week. I think had this aired as originally intended, yeah, it probably wouldn't have been as well received as, as now because, you know, Absence makes the heart grow fonder and it developed this kind of semi-legendary status as the lost story that never got to air until it got to air three times. <laughs> but I'm glad that it was, it was resurrected. The animation was absolutely the best way to go about the missing parts and not just Tom Baker in the museum doing linking narration. <laughs> Hi, 1992. How you doing? Yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad that I picked it, and I'm very glad, glad I didn't pick the arc instead. I'm glad too because that. I was... guess you get to pick the arc in a few weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, guess that. I, I'm sorry, didn't get the memo that that story's been banned. <laughs> really? We're, oh, thank. Oh, thank God. Okay, so well, um, well, next week on Doctor Who Reviews, then a momentous occasion. It's brand new Doctor Who. I'm so excited to sit down next week and finally experience brand new Doctor Who with Joey Whitaker in Doctor Who Redacted! Yeah, we'll go over that first, are we? Okay. So, what happened this week was quite amazing because they managed to completely undermine their next episode. <laughs> Not that I was fucking excited for it anyway, but... No, but we'll talk about it now. Doctor Who Redacted is a ten-part fiction podcast where, honestly, we should be on a royalty check here because it's about a podcast <laughs> that's so unpopular, it actually saves the, the lives of the people that host it. Yeah, there's something redacting uh, everyone to do to do with the Doctor. And since these podcasters are so obscure, it affects them last. And so they're aware of it and they're able to, like, do something to take action and save the day. Which sounds fucking familiar, a podcast. But it's, it, sure, it's but... got you excited, hasn't it, Jerry? Because it's been described as very gay, very trans. Yeah, okay, like... Legend of the Aquatic Silurians. I, I said this as that. Legend of the Aquatic Silurians. I complained about this in Eve of the Daleks when they did when they revealed Thasmin. It's like there's two stories left, so all they've got is like they've got no time to do nothing. And it's chipped though. So Legend of the Aquatic Silurians is gonna be over here like, oh, would you like some would you like some table scraps of queer representation? Maybe th maybe yes, we'll throw the doctor a look. Maybe she'll imply, oh, I have feelings for you all. I can't confess them yet because I'm too... Oh, it's so conflicting. Oh, I can't commit to this or anything. And it's like, oh, here you go, Thasma. Here you go, Thasmanites. Here's your little table scraps. Meanwhile, Doctor Who Redacted is over here. Here's a full f***ing buffet. It's gay and trans and Juno Dawson is writing it. Who is both of those things, I believe. Uh, do we yeah. know how long each episode is going to be? Is it going no, to be like... No, we, we don't. No. And the real kicker... So what is this Sunday? The same day as legend. As legend. Who gives a shit? Doesn't it, doesn't it air <laughs> right after? Pirates. Hang on, whoa, whoa, whoa! Doesn't it air right after Legend just to completely undermine it? <laughs> I, so well, for well for me that means that you know. Well, I'm going to save it right after because you know I'm not, I'm not going to really truly ruin Legend by listening to this good Doctor Who beforehand. I'm going to deal with the shit, and then I'm going to listen to Redacted, and it'll soothe my worries, and I won't give as much of a shit. I'm still going to get mad at Legend, but... Are we going to talk about both next week? Oh. Um, problem with that is like, people will not have heard it, so they might be spoiling it. Yeah, well... well I mean, <laughs> we're, we're talking about a show that also airs at the same time. They, they may not Yeah, but that's not an ongoing series, is it? That's not an ongoing series. That's a one-off for uh, Easter. We can, I mean, we... I mean, it's the same thing. You can talk about episode one and 
a bit. Well, we'll we'll see. We'll see when we get to it. Oh yeah. Also, there's a new Doctor Who TV story. We should mention that. Oh yeah, right. Because that's, that's what that's we're actually covering next week, isn't it? We're covering Legend of the Sea Boys. Unfortunately, but you know, I am like for all I'm gonna get mad at the story, and I will. Sure, I will because you know they're gonna say the name, and I'm gonna be pissed off, and it's probably gonna well, deal with unfortunate tropes because we are in ancient China with pirates, and we but, saw that the last but what time we saw good, the Sea Boys. We, it's a Chibnall story, Rainier. So was Eva the Daleks freezing Inferno. Don't do that. I, no. Look, look, hey, look. Hey, hey, can, can we can we just come to a compromise and just let uh, Fresno just rant for five minutes at one point next week? Just. Let, let all the hate flow through. <laughs> okay, uh, the dark Palpa- side of the force Okay, Palpatine. Strong. Yeah, sure, let's do that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for all... Now the- no, 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 we need Fresno's head on a uh, Aquarius Solarian going, Unlimited power! Oh, dear God, no. No, see, I'm not the uh, phone shop person. That's Cat. I don't... Well, you know Kat's going to be watching this, and then all of a sudden we're just going to see <laughs> the, the VTuber on top of <laughs> I mean, it, uh, it could be it could be good, but the signs are not positive. I mean, it's... Fans have been complaining that it's too short, because it's 47 minutes long. I mean, I mean Eve was it'll, 50 it'll be minutes faster. long. It'll be Eve was faster. the same time frame. I thought it yeah. wasn't even an hour. No, it, it was yeah. 50 minutes. Okay, well, I, I liked Eve. I mean, Eve was. Okay, but Eve didn't but feature I mean, the Aquatic Silurians, so. And it didn't feature the Doctor saying their name like they were a fucking. Hey, can, yeah. we, can, we, can we go ahead and uh, re edit the wiki? <laughs> Just real fast. <laughs> I mean, if you want my guy to come for your head, yeah, sure. I mean, I mean, I, look, I've got my screen cap of the, of the last time we did it, I can refer to. It's a more life yeah. on podcast forever. But yeah, I mean, look, look, look. It's gonna, it's gonna be shit. It's going to have table scraps for representation. It's going to use the name of the Aquatic Silurians over and over and piss me off. It's going to be set in ancient China with the pirates, which is probably going to feed into more uncomfortable tropes involving them being honorable samurai because, you know, Gaz is fucking fighting one with a, with a sword and shit. So it's probably going to piss me off. But that being said, for all I'm going to get mad, I don't shits because I have Doctor Who redacted now, so I don't need you, Chibnall. Yeah. I was saying this to Krista, and I said, it is almost, and this almost is bearing a lot of weight, to be fair, it is almost a shame how Chibnall has been, how Chibnall's, like, bullshit has been effectively, like, undermined. He wants to go remember 2007 when the show was good? Oh, look, your successor is Russell T. Davies, announced a year before you leave. Who gives a shit about your nostalgia tour now when the original guy's coming back? Also, oh, the, the undermining make... continues because BBC America is running a marathon before that episode. Oh, yeah. Out of 13 episodes, but also of Matt Smith episodes. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, so either, you either this is to build up to some sort of cameo. I don't think that BBC America is building that up. I, I agree with you. I mean, I mean, no, I'm just pretty sure BBC America just sees Smith as the American doctor. I mean, and we still yeah. don't have any information about the episode that comes after this. We, we might not even get a trailer. I mean, to finish, and I mean, like I said, and the other thing is that, you know, Legend is going to come out. It's going to have these little table scraps of uh, representation for the, all the Thasmans out there to latch onto. And then, oh, look at this. Airing the same day, Doctor Who Redacted, gay and trans as fuck. Oh, don't need you, Chibnall. Thasmans going to end with them both dead. I'm just saying it now. Uh, yeah, I mean... Like I said, I would not be surprised if Yaz dies in this story. As Ch- as Kachiris was saying, Legend of the Buried Gay. Oh, for Christ's sakes! Because you know, look look at Chibnall's fucking track record. He can't. He's like subverted one fucking buried I mean, gay moment. I'm and looking at fa- his, his track record, and I'm just sighing in- internally. Like the, when he did it in Praxius, that was a twist. The gay characters lived? What a twist! That shouldn't be a fucking twist. It should be a natural fucking thing and not a thing that happens over and fucking over, Chibnall. I can't believe I left, no. I left the fridge door open. Let's just pull him out. There we go. But, you know, I am getting worked up, but, like, for all I'm getting worked up, Doctor Who Redacted is coming out. 
I don't need you, Chibnall. <laughs> but I am here with you all to watch this shit because I promised yeah. I would see this shit through to the end. And back down, I'm going to do it. And also, you know, I've got to do it for the round table with Krista and Will. Absolutely. And shall, I, uh, shall I wrap things up here? Please, let's do it. Okay, so you can find us on Twitter at Reviews Doctor. You can also find us individually at Freezing Inferno, at the Kachiri, at Reniac the Maniac, and the absent cat is at Concave Usurper. Speaking of absent, there are two books you should really consider buying. Ding ding. Back to the Vampire Volume 2 when it comes out by Kristen Mitzir. Volume 1's out now on Amazon. Link in the description below. And The Tower Through the Trees. I've got that right? Yep. The Tower Through the Trees. A novel written by friend of the show, Sean Dillon. Which I really need to get to that book. But yeah, I mean, so I'm going to have two great books to read in April. Oh, how about... Absolutely. My co-hosts uh, sometimes stream video games on twitch.tv at forward slash freezing inferno at forward slash the Kachiri. Have I got that right, Kachiri? Yipper. Yeah. Twitch.tv twitch forward slash the Kachiri and twitch.tv forward slash freezing inferno. Cat freezing... Uh, no, not freezing inferno, damn it. Cat is freezing inferno? Twitch.tv... Yeah, freezing inferno slash can't give you Zerper. No. Twitch.tv forward slash can't give you Zerper is Cat's uh, Twitch. And... Okay. I got the... my Elden Ring highlights where I yelled about dogs jump scaring me. That certainly was a thing that happened. <laughs> certainly was a thing that happened. It was fun to play Elden Ring in the anime then. But uh, yeah, wrap the sucker up. I will. So thank you to, to you listening to us talk about Sharda. We hope you enjoyed it. Thank you to my co-host for discussing Sharda with me. And join us next time when we discuss Jodie Whittaker in Doctor Who Redacted. And also Legend of the Sea Boys, I guess. I guess. I guess. Yeah, it's just there. Yeah. It's a it's a living. <laughs> okay, Ridley. <laughs> okay, good night. <laughs> Until then, bye for now. Bye bye. The the there's um books the books on the shelves the um, yeah the books are, the books, books are on the desk yeah there are uh, there's one written by Zephyr Beeblebrox and there's one that's something like Hyperspace Bypass and I'm going to have to repeat that because my telephone rang. Hi, blooper reel. <laughs>